Zwei Group invites all AEC industry leaders to the 2024 AEC Small Business and Entrepreneurship Forum, the premier event for small firms in the AEC sector. Experience innovative strategies and insights on May 21st, crafted by Zweig Group's industry experts. Engage in keynotes and interactive sessions focused on recruitment, retention, and business growth. Join Zwei Group for this unique networking opportunity and take your business to new heights. Secure your spot today and be part of the AEC industry's future. Visit ZweigGroup.com for more information. The Zwei Group team looks forward to welcoming you. You're listening to a Zweig Letter Podcast exclusive, putting architectural, engineering, planning, and environmental consulting guru Mark Zweig and his team of experts straight talk in your ear. Mark has more than 30 years of experience helping AEP and environmental firms thrive, and these podcasts deliver his invaluable management, industry, client, and HR advice directly to you, free of charge. The Zweig Letter Podcast let you develop professionally, wherever you are. Hey, everyone, and thank you for joining Zweig Group Media and the Zweig Letter exclusive interview series. With almost 25 years of continuous coverage of the design industry, the Zweig Letter is a constant in an ever-changing marketplace. We are bringing you some of the best and brightest minds that our industry has to offer. Today, I am pleased to welcome Mr. Will Swearingen, Director of Surveys and Books here at Zweig Group. Will, it's great to have you join us. How are you doing today? Great. It's good to be here, Randy. Thanks for having me. Oh, not a problem. Not a problem. So, you know, a lot of times we, we bring in a lot of big names from outside of uh, the company itself. And then from time to time, I have um, accosted some of my colleagues to to come on board and, and, and join us for one of these interviews. I've had Jamie Claire talk about M&A and at some point in time, I'm going to get Mark and Chad and some others on here. But, you know, I just thought it would be really appropriate to bring you on and kind of talk about what's happening in the world of um, surveys and books. Um, not so much to highlight what we're doing, but I think more so to highlight the information uh, that you are are, are um, getting uh, from the research and from uh, the work that we're doing uh, in your section of the company. And so I really want to just kind of talk with you today. And I wanted you to kind of share with the audience a little bit about, A, you know, what you're doing there in the survey and books group, and then also talk about, you know, some of the things that you're, you're, you've been uh, learning recently about our industry and, and, you know, what is, what are some of the unique findings in the design industry as of late? So, Will, welcome again. And, and just tell us a little bit about yourself and, and uh, what, you, what you're currently doing right now in surveys and books. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again, Randy. You know, Zweig surveys um, have been around for almost 30 years or, or over 30 years. So the product itself is tried and tested. Um, I mean, the industry uh, has leaned on it and contributed to it for over 30 years. So the information that the Zweig group surveys are, are gathering um, has been tried and tested by the industry for for decades. So um, each year we attempt to kind of come in and take a look at what the content is and, and as the market shifts uh, or as um, trends change, uh, obviously Obamacare was a big, big uh, adjustment for firms. Uh, so when anything like that comes in, we try to go back and update the surveys to get the most relevant info uh, that we can from our clients and, and from our contributors to the surveys. Okay. So, yeah, you speak of Obamacare, and I know that had a, a definite impact on small and medium-sized businesses, as well as large businesses, for sure. But, you know, I know that um, we do, I mean, we do a, a wealth of different surveys, and, and we find out a lot of different information. So you, you want to kind of give me just a quick rundown? If, if, I, if I was new to Zweig, what, what, why would I even care about the surveys that you guys are doing? Absolutely. Um, the surveys touch on a lot of different topics, um, ranging from financial performance to recruiting and retention, um, incentive compensation, um, our policies, procedures, and benefits, um, project management. Basically, each 
survey that we offer um, attempts to look at a different sector of an AEP firm and attempt to inform a, a leader in that sector, whether it's an HR director, whether it's the CEO, or whether it's a small firm and it's a CEO, HR director, uh, and project manager all in one, um, our surveys are intended to, to really help firm leaders take a look at their business, um, align their resources, and align their people in a way that they can be more efficient about running their businesses. So that's, that's kind of the idea. And, you know, as I get further into to my tenure here with Y Group and I, I touch base with more and more clients, I, I realize just exactly how critical a lot of this information is to firm leaders. Um, there's metrics that people track year over year to make sure that they're on trend uh, or up to par with where they were last year and, and with where the industry is moving today. So, you know, that's that's what's really important to me is that this research helps people do business better. Okay. All right. So it sounds like, in, in, I mean, in your mind, obviously, there's a lot of benchmarking that goes on. Um, there are a, a lot of efforts to kind of make sure that, you know, that 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 with the information that we uh, are, are gaining through our surveys and through some of the books that we are preparing, that we're giving we're being able to give firms more information to help them run their businesses more efficiently. And also just as a check in to make sure that everything is is on par and moving forward. Absolutely. So we just completed the 2016 financial performance survey. Um, which is one of our biggest surveys and I think one of the most important for the industry as a whole. Um, and we had a lot of interesting findings and as a lot of people would expect, the industry is hot right now. Uh, people are people are making money and it's just a matter of whether they're collecting their profits and making themselves more profitable um, through investing back in their firm uh, or if, or if they're pulling that money out of the firm to, to do other things, whether it's M&A or, or pay themselves to, to get a new beach house. You know, some of that stuff is, is relevant and evident uh, in some of the findings in this survey. But, you know, a couple of things that we found that were really interesting was um, return on assets were up, you know, over a four year period. Um, interest bearing debt to, to EBITDA was up, which is indicative of people taking uh, advantage of low interest rates, it looks like. You know, people are financing um, different parts of their firm, which which I think is pretty interesting with these record low uh, interest rates that we have. People are locking those in. Um, we also found a lot of interesting stuff um, regarding bonuses and, and pre-tax, pre-bonus uh, profits, and, and all those were up this year. And, and so, it really paints a picture of an industry that's thriving at the moment coming out of, uh, you know, obviously the recession four or five years ago, or actually longer than that. Really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Time flies. It does. Uh, it does. Um, but, but firms have come out and, and are really hot right now. So I think it's important that even though times are good right now, that people keep their, their finger on the pulse of their firm through understanding these financial metrics um, because you never know when the next downturn is going to happen and you want to be in a position to where you have uh, ample cash uh, on hand and, and that your cash flows can, can cover the cost of your business. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, I mean, that's a, that certainly is a great point. And I think it's, I think it's important um, for people to understand the, the, you know, and the analytics of things, especially when it comes to information and parsing that when I, in the recruiting space, which is the area that it's my purview, we talk about key performance indicators when it comes to cost per hire and knowing, you know, knowing how long it takes for you to identify and find a, um, a, a candidate and all that good stuff. And, you know, w with that information, you can run your business more efficiently, regard, re you know, whatever it is, uh, whether it's on the talent acquisition side, whether it's on the financial performance side, you know, information really is power. And I'm kind of reminded of, um, um, you know, there were a couple of movies that came out recently, as you mentioned, the, um, the, the you know, financial meltdown that we had in 2008. And, you know, one of those movies uh, featured a couple of guys that had, were, had presaged or had identified the, the collapse of the mortgage industry. And, and, um, and part of the story the reason why they were able to corroborate their findings was that they basically just did research. 
They just right. did their homework. They ultimately uh, and they ultimately went to some of the hotbed areas that had the quickest meltdown when it came to mortgages, where people in, like in Florida were getting five and six mortgages. And, you know, in the movie, they show a stripper that, you know, had like five mortgages on six different properties. And, you know, you kind of laugh about it, but that was at that point, that was the aha moment for them. And they had yeah. collected enough data to make to make to corroborate their findings and make sense of where they thought that market was going and and true indeed I don't know that anyone wants to be remembered for being the guy that predicted the financial meltdown or the mortgage crisis but you know a lot of times uh, the argument that you'll hear whether it's from Wall Street or elsewhere is that we missed all of the markers that were there we ignored them and I think especially in the design industry um, while it's 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 not it's not a direct correlation. The simple idea is that there are always going to be markers of where the industry is headed, um, and usually that comes with certain bits of data and information that, if gleaned properly, can really tell a business owner um, how to prepare for you know whether there's going to be sunshine in the future or whether there's going to be stormy days. And um, I I think it's important for, for uh, individuals, whether they're looking at our surveys or any for that matter, to get good data uh, and be able to understand where the market is headed. It's interesting that uh, that you pointed out the big short. It's a, a, a great movie. But Thank you for, for remembering the name. I, the name was escaping me, but I saw the movie and I can replay that whole scene in my head and it was amazing. And his <laughs> face was priceless when that stripper told him that you know, he thought she only owned one property and she was like, oh, I own like six properties. And he was like six. And it was just yeah. amazing. So, well, and, and that's that's exactly it is those data points are very telling uh, of, of where things are. And with Zweig Group's 30 year plus history um, and the strong, rich brand that we do have, um, we have some of the the top AE firms contributing to our research. So those the data points that we are collecting uh, are very relevant and very telling of some of the best and highest performing firms. So um, I do think that that's an, a neat indicator that, that sort of sets us apart is that the data that we're collecting is, um, is from the top firms. So do, we don't want it to skew it one way or the other, but we have contributors um, from, from three person firms all the way up to 3000 person firms. So uh, the data points definitely paint the picture. And, and right now uh, the industry looks good. So. Well, that's, that's good to hear. So, so, so given the latitude of the different types of firms that we uh, get information from, do you ever get requests or, or is there a way for a firm to get some specialized uh, information uh, based on a specific data set of in, data set of, of um, material um, for a, an area, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I get calls pretty much every day from from firm leaders, CFOs, CEOs that are calling in and, and have a question or two about a particular data point, and and there's always a lot more of information behind the data sets than the actual data sets um, that are presented. We we give the most comprehensive view that we can, but there's there's obviously things behind the data that we can't bring forward. And I obviously um, really want to help people whenever they have those questions to, to dig in. So I had a, a question the other day about a particular um, data point and went back in, looked at the data and, and looked at exactly what firms contributed to that particular data point so that I could help one of our, our top clients take a look and see how they were actually performing against some of their peers. So there's always opportunities to go in and take a look at the, the numbers um, and look at them from a different angle. And, and that's something that I pride myself on is trying to be able to give people the best uh, customer service that I can, because I, I understand these numbers can get uh, confusing. They, it's, it's just a, a, a vast quantity of percentages and, and various data points on a chart. Uh, and, and sometimes if, if people can't make sense of the numbers, by all means, reach out and I'll try to, me or, or one of our colleague, my colleagues will take a look and try to figure out a way to uh, make sense of that data point. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, we will definitely put uh, your email in the show notes and um, 
Um, obviously on the video, we'll try to put something on the lower third of the screen just with your information on there so people know how to reach you uh, sure. here at Zwei Group. And I think that will be um, that will certainly be helpful. Um, so we, we are almost two thirds of the way through 2016. Um, what would you say are some of the most interesting findings to date this year uh, about the design industry through all of the different surveys that we've done? Obviously, we do salary surveys. You know, like you said, you gave you gave a list of the different surveys that we do. But what are some of the biggest aha moments that you've had this year, specifically uh, in 2016? Hmm. You know, there's been a lot. It's a lot of eye-opening uh, moments, but. I'd have to say that this the recent financial performance survey has definitely provided me with some aha moments. Just looking at you know the profitability measures that firms can use to to see where they can allocate resources um, to really boost not only their their bottom line but to boost their employees' morale um, by redistributing profits um, is is a pretty interesting thing. And so. Uh, in the recent financial performance survey, we found that uh, S corps outperformed C corps on a variety of profitability measures, um, but as a percentage of pre-tax pre-bonus profits, C corps actually paid out twice as much in profit distributions as the S corps. So, you know, you can take what you want from that that uh, data point there, but I found it very interesting that as they outpaced C corps on all profitability measures that we have uh, in this particular survey, they, on the flip side, C corps actually paid out almost twice as much in, as a percentage of that pre-tax pre-bonus profit um, through distributions. So I thought that that was very interesting um, and also found that uh, the bonus, the bonus structure this year, or actually last year in the fiscal year 2015, um, that the bonuses per employee skyrocketed, uh, which which just indicates how profitable firms' operations are right now. Um, so there's there's a ton of data points, and going back to you sort of alluded to re recruiting and retention, um, and just exactly how costly it is whenever there's turnover in a firm. Uh, the, the financial performance survey this year indicates that turnover is down year over year. For, for the last three years, it's, it's been a declining trend, which is really good um, for firms because recruiting and retention is key. It's key to the success of a firm, especially when you look at how expensive it is to go out and find a quality candidate. Uh, I, think, I think oftentimes people don't realize you know how much they might have to spend, and maybe they do have that money available to go out, perhaps out of state, out of town, to find that top talent. Um, but they may settle for somebody in town. Um, but when you look at the five-year plan, you know maybe they should have spent that extra five or ten thousand dollars to to go out and and do some heavy recruiting and find the, the actual piece that the firm needed. So, you know, when you look at the, the whole picture and, and you see where the, the resources are inside of a firm and exactly what the plan of that firm is, you can start to, to understand how to shift around those, those financial and personnel resources um, to truly hit your goals in that plan. Okay. Yeah, no, and, and you know, you're, you're kind of speaking my language. You're right. I mean, a lot of firms, you know, the retention levels are, are much higher right now, and, and a lot of firms are able to keep good people, which certainly is 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 great. Uh, obviously, for, for us, you know, as recruiters, um, sometimes it just means that maybe we're not getting as many normal jobs as we would because firms are, are having a much better time keeping great talent. And so I, I, I'm excited about that. Uh, it, but it's always going to create new opportunities. And I think specifically, like you said, with regard to recruitment and retention, just firms just knowing their numbers um, and understanding the, the ebbs and flows of, of how talent acquisition goes will certainly allow them to prepare and plan for the future and do it in a way that makes sense, both from an economic standpoint, 
as well as from a functional standpoint in terms of the growth of the company, whether they're opening up new offices or whether they're expanding within their current setting. Um, and all of that is done through uh, the basis of, of operating from a good data point of information as opposed to, you know, not having the right information, which is important. And I That's think, right. I think in, in our industry, it seems like, you know, if you make a bad decision, a lot of times the precursor to that bad decision was you having bad information. Yeah, you, do, you don't want to operate blindly, um, you know. Just having money in the bank isn't isn't sufficient, and knowing that you've got that you made more money this week than you paid out this week, you know that th that's great information. But but there's other pieces of that puzzle that um, can really help paint a better picture of exactly what your situation is. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. So so what do you guys have coming down the road? I mean, we're almost towards the end of the year, and uh, I would imagine you, you're, you're, you're trying to get things in order now for the next year's salary survey. And, you know, that's a that's a big deal. I know there's some new projects underway within um, surveys and books uh, with regard to being able to uh, maybe get our information out even faster than it is currently. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Maybe give us a, a sneak preview as to what we can expect from your group. Sure. Yeah. Uh, pretty excited about 2017, you know, our, our company touches on so many different aspects of the AEP uh, industry from, from recruiting to M&A to valuation to ownership transition. You know, we're in uh, the C-suite of so many different companies and, and we're, we have consultants all over the U.S. every day. So we have a, a, an incredible reach. And, and I think that one thing that we need to to be focusing on in 2017 is coalescing a lot of that information. And then I think that the surveys and books group is, is a good place to do that and, and to bring all that data together. So, um, yeah, we'll definitely be, be taking some different approaches to data collection. Um, our salary surveys, I think are going to be, um, very robust in 2017. We're going to be collecting more data, I think, than we have in, in quite some time. Um, but for the rest of 2016, we've got, um, our fee and billing survey that's going to be coming out. That's, that's slowly wrapping up, um, at the moment, our M and a book will be coming out. Um, and we're just putting the final touches on our 2017 calendar so that we can give people, you know, that blueprint of what the year looks like so that they can be mindful of when they need to, uh, get your participation in uh, for a particular survey. So, okay. Now, you know, speaking of this, I mean, I know there may be some people out there listening to this saying, man, you know, this dad, this sounds great. Um, I would love to just get this data on a regular basis. Is there a subscription uh, available for someone that would like to just get on, um, on a regular calendar of as the information is hot off the presses that you're disseminating that to them? We are working on the subscription based model, um, but we currently uh, work with firms all over that want to have the full suite. So there's, there's definitely opportunities available. We do bundles. Um, we do a salary bundle. We do a people's bundle, which, uh, encompasses our incentive compensation, our recruiting and retention and policies, procedures, and benefits. So there are, uh, there are specific packages, uh, that we do have that are highly discounted that people can get. Okay. All right. Well, very cool. Very cool. Well, man, I, I really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule. I mean, every time I walk into your office, you've got like a stack of books this high in there. And you're constantly, your head down. You're constantly working on things. So uh, I think that's a, that's a good thing. And, and it's so great, you know, having you as a colleague here. So I again, I appreciate you taking some time just to kind of share uh, some basic information about what you guys are doing uh, in surveys and books. So I want to I want to thank you for that. Um, listen, as a reminder, all Zwei Group Media programs like this one are available in both podcast and video format, free for download on YouTube, um, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, just to name a few places. Uh, we'd like to thank you for watching this in video or listening to the podcast by offering you a free copy of the Zwei Letter. Just visit info dot zweiggroup.com 
forward slash free TZL. A link to all of this information, including Will's contact information, will be in our show notes. And we would love it if you would share this link with a friend. I'm Randy Wilburn, and you've been listening to Zwei Group Media, part of Zwei Group. Remember, we exist to make you more successful. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this Swag Letter Podcast exclusive. We hope that you can apply Mark's no-holds-barred advice to your daily professional life. For a free transcript of this or any episode of our podcast, please visit info.zwiggroup.com slash podcast. If you want more wisdom and inspiration, in addition to information about finance, HR, and marketing your firm, subscribe to the print or digital version of the Zweig Letter online at zweiggroup.com slash publications.